last week's sermon on my, on my, on my this week. I mean, I was here and I heard it, but I wanted my friend to hear it. So I'm looking, it, it wasn't, up, it didn't come in my, like it always does. I didn't know. Oh, the floor.
So Jamie is out sick, but she feels like she's getting better and she'll be better and off quarantine and she still wants to do the chili, the free chili dinner. That's next Sunday, 5.30 to 7.30. It'll be kind of lame if I'm the only vehicle out there. So <laughs> if you would help with that, it would be, a, it would be so awesome. Um, otherwise, we are still going to move forward and we'll, we'll just pass out candy to the kids that come and people can have a free chili dinner. So... Talk to me after the service if you feel like that's something you can do. If you just need an idea to decorate your car, that part's easy. And then all you have to do is just be kind to the children and um, interact with them and give them some candy. All right, thank you. Are there any more announcements? today is from Psalm 96, 1 through 6. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name, proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Stay with us for real opening door two.
you come stand by me, please? Is Vivian Crawford here today? No? Okay. Uh, Matea, I saw you. you. She's a fourth grader, but she didn't go in last year. Will you come stand up here with us, Matea? Raise your hand if you were if you're a fourth grader and you didn't get one last year. Last year was kind of crazy. Anybody? I want to make sure you get a Bible. All right. Well, um, you guys enjoy these. These are the Adventure Bibles, and they're written for kids, and they're really cool. And so if you bring these to Sunday school, you'll get extra points. But the most important thing is that you spend time reading them.
us pray. Gracious God, we recognize in your word where we are told to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. We rejoice that all of us in your family are called to make that commitment of giving ourselves our finances, our time, and as we are seeing this morning, even from our young people, we are offering ourselves as living sacrifices for eternal purposes. So take now these monetary gifts as well as our hearts and lives behind them. Use them for your purposes and your glory. We pray in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from Revelation chapter 3, verses 1 to 3, 15, 16, 19, and 20. To the angel of the Lord and Sardis, so these are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds, you have reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up, strengthen what remains is about to die, for I have found your deeds unfinished in the sight of my God. Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard, hold it fast and repent. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at, the, at what time I will come to you. If I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot, I wish you were either not one or the, nor the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. To those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Yep. Hey. <laughs> Let's go before the Lord together in prayer. Wonderful God, we rejoice in the gift of life, the fullness of life, and we see vivid reminder this morning of how life moves along and we each have a part to play. We have a role within the greater family of God, and we're encouraged by that. We know that you are here at the beginning through the process and bring up the other end, and that everything will be summed up in you. How we praise you this morning, that we are reminded again that we are to value one another, and there is no superiority or inferiority in the family of God and the body of Christ. We are reminded even of Scripture, where you said to the prophet Isaiah, let no one do not say that I am just a youth, I cannot be an effective service. When you call Jeremiah to serve you, as Paul wrote to Timothy, let no one look down upon you or despise your youth. And so, gracious God, we are reminded again this morning that each one of us, whoever we are, whatever our capabilities and standard in life, standing in life, we can offer ourselves and make an eternal impact for your glory. So, Lord, continue to take this hour of worship as we as a people of faith gather around the throne together and allow your name to be lifted above all names. Thank you. Praise you. May all honor and glory go to the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom we pray. Amen. 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 Would you please stand with us and make a joyful noise, noise to our Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm.
Everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior. The
Classic records, eight track tapes, green stamps, and a mimograph paper. Aren't you glad that you came to church today so I can make you feel old? <laughs> I don't remember any of this stuff, but I've seen it on the History Channel. That's about it. <laughs> change is a part of life, and change is happening more and more rapidly now than any other time in history. Regardless of all that change happening in the world, we need to look inwards and see what change we can make in ourselves. Uh, there's a saying on the youth room wall upstairs. It says, what is the point of all this if you're not going to let it change you? Change is a very common topic in the Bible. Revelations 3, for example, talks a lot about change. 
Revelation 1 through 3 states that to the angel of the church in Sardis write, These are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are in fact dead. Wake up, strengthen what remains and is about to die, for I have found your deeds unfinished in the sight of my God. Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard. Hold it fast and repent. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what time I will come to you. Now, what does this mean? Let's break it down. Verse 1 states that the church has a reputation of being alive, but they are dead. The way I interpret this is that while they claim to worship God and they do charitable and godly deeds in the world, in fact, on the inside, their faith is dying. And their faith is dying. Um, obviously, something's wrong with the church. Otherwise, they would not need to be written to. Their faith is most likely lacking, and they no longer are taking to heart what the Bible says. We can apply this to our own lives as well. How many times have we said that we are Christian, but then our actions do not match our words? This is exactly what this verse is talking about. We need to look to ourselves and see what changes we can do to help remedy this. It is important that we do as we say. Next, verse 2, or verse two is saying that the church needs to wake up and revive what is dying. It also says that God has plans for the church, but because their faith is dying, these plans go unfinished. We can apply this to our lives as well. God has, had, has his plans for all of us and our lives. However, if our faith is dying or we are moving away from God, we stray from his plans for us. John was insisting that the churches change their ways, and we should do the same if we are straying from God. I interpret verse 3 as John saying that the church as a whole needs to take what Jesus has, Jesus has taught to heart, and that we need to live by those teachings. This verse says that you have to hold those teachings close and repent from your sins. It is urging us to go back to God and take hold of what he is saying and repent from our sins. This whole excerpt is appealing to the church to change its ways and turn, it, and turn back to God. And while our situation may not be as strange as being told off by one of the twelve disciples, we can still learn a lot about this. We should be taking the Bible and Jesus' teachings to heart, changing our lives to be more like Him. God is able to change our lives to, for the better as long as we let Him. Moving on to Revelation 3, 15 through 16, it says, I know your deeds, that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were cold or hot. So because you were lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Why is this verse important? Well, when someone's drinking coffee or tea or any other beverage like that, they either want it to be hot or cold, not room temperature. This isn't appealing at all. And that is exactly what John is saying to the church and to us. God does not want us to be lukewarm in our faith. He wants us to be hot in our faith, taking to heart what he says and to repent. John is telling the church that they need to be hot in their faith and stop pretending to just be hot. The church was very appealing on the outside with their big arches and everything like that. It looks like the perfect church to go to. However, they were lacking a key part, and that's their faith. The internals of the church itself is falling apart. Jesus goes on to say in verse 19 through 21 that, Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline, so be earnest and repent. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person, and they with me. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat with my father on his throne. He's saying that because he loves us, he gives us discipline, not the other way around. And, and that to those who repent from their sins, they will be able to eat with him. Jesus wants all of us to sit in heaven with him on his throne. He has given all of us the ability to repent, and now all that is left is for us to make the changes in our lives. We, have, we just have to take that step forward and take that chance. So my question for all of us today is, what can we do to take that step, to make that change? How can we walk closer to God in the hard times, even when it might not be the popular choice? How are we going to be hot in our faith in God? God has his plans for us. We just have to have the faith in order to go through with it. Sometimes change is necessary in our own lives in order to truly follow God and what he has set forth for us. But sometimes God wants us to be the change in this world, and that's usually not going to be comfortable. God convicts us to stand up for what He has taught us, or for what He has taught us that is right in this world. But everyone, everywhere we look, what is right has been distorted or bent, folded and rewritten to fit someone else's agenda. It has become exceedingly difficult to know where one line ends and another begins. Nothing is black and white anymore, except for the fact that it is, if we truly think about it. God has laid it all out for us, and there's really no confusion in the world. The world is confused, but God has never been confused. So each of us needs to be brave and really look inside of each of ourselves. Be the change inside and out.
going to be speaking about change and how we should start implementing change into our lives through God. I have taken verses from Acts and Revelations, which are Revelations chapter 3, verses 19, 19 through 21, and Acts chapter 8, verses 1 through 3. Everyone has heard the story about Paul when they were growing up in Sunday school, about a man who hated Christians and wanted to do everything in his power to, to harm them and their faith in God. In Acts chapter 8, verses 1 through 3, it says, On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church of Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered, scattered through Judea and Samaria. Godly men buried Stephen and mourned deeply for him. But Saul began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he dragged off both men and women and put them in prison. During this time, Paul was, very, was every Christian's worst fear. They lived their lives scared to believe and put their trust in God. I can't imagine living every single day scared to believe in something that once gave me comfort and hope that really no one else could give me. However, Paul did pay the price for persecuting all these Christians. The book of Acts says that Paul was on his way from Jerusalem to Syria, Damascus, with a mandate issued by the high priest to seek out and arrest any followers of Jesus, with the intention of returning them to Jerusalem as prisoners, for them to be questioned and possibly executed. But while on a journey to Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him, and when he fell to the ground, he heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? So he was led by the hand into Damascus, and for three days he did not eat nor did he drink anything. When Paul was healed and could open, open his eyes and see again, he did not see the world the same. When he was able to see again, he saw God and Christians in a different light. He was able to understand Christians' beliefs and their lifestyles. This ties into my sermon today because the change that Paul experienced, literally and spiritually, is an example of how God can change our lives for the better if we let him. Obviously, none of us need to go blind to understand that God can change our lives through faith in him. But the story of Paul is a way to better understand how God is working through us to change the way we view the world and others. Everyone experiences change in their lives, sometimes bad change and sometimes good change. God can also change fears we may have in our lives or make us see those fears in a different light. He can comfort us when fear gets the best of us or when you feel stuck in life, God can help you change the current ways you may feel stuck in. Or he can just simply give you the courage to make those big changes in your life that you are scared to make without his faith and comfort. Another very important verse that demonstrates how God can change our lives if we let him is Revelations chapter 3, verses 19 through 21. In this verse, God says, Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. If this verse were prioritized in our everyday lives, the motivation to change our lives would be easy because we would have Christ to show us how. It is easy to get caught up in all the change that is happening in the world right now and want to make a difference there first. But in order to do that, it is important that we look inward and see the changes that can be made inside first. This verse makes it clear that change can come easily if we simply open the door to God and let him into our hearts. But it's never always that simple. A lot of the time you will hear constantly that all you need to do is simply open the door for God to walk in and help you make those changes. But that is easier said than done. It is hard to open the door and be completely vulnerable and willing to listen to what God has to say. Although we may want to prioritize God and listen to what he is saying, it is hard when life gets in the way. But life getting in the way doesn't make someone a bad person, it just simply makes them human. But it is still important to try and find the time to open that door to God, even during the hard times in our lives. Because God is able to comfort us in those times of struggle and need, but it's up to us if we want to take the steps ourselves to let him in. We can start to see the changes that may need to be made in our lives. He can help guide us in the right direction if we are feeling lost or scared that we may be making the wrong choices. God always has the answers to our questions and prayers, but it is up to us if we want those answers. 
Something important to take away from all these scriptures is that change takes time. If we really need to change, if we really need change in our lives, it is not going to happen overnight, nor will it be easy. We may not even know what change we need in our lives, but that's where the support from God comes in. We just need to trust that God can guide us through the difficult times. The truth is, we should never stop trying to better ourselves and the things around us. God will always want us to better ourselves each and every day, even if it's hard to change or if it makes us uncomfortable. Because most of the time, when we step out of our comfort zones, that's when the best things in our lives tend to happen. We can take many things away from this message today, or we can move on with our lives and not change anything. Or we can look to God and ask him what changes need to be made. These changes don't need to be drastic by any means. They just need to be something that comes from the heart and something that shows the love you have for God. At the end of the day, God just wants us to be the best version of ourselves we can be. And the only way to do that is to start by looking in ourselves and making the changes that will only make us better people through our faith in God. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I am so thankful to be able to give this message and praise you today. And I pray that everyone take these messages with them into their week and put their trust in God and the plans that he has for each and every person in this room. The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, when all the earth rejoices, all the earth rejoices, He wraps Himself in light, in darkness strives to hide, in trembles at His voice. Trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great. How great is our God. In Time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The Godhead three in one, the Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the